taped. Now, Michael Cohen certainly has recordings of the president, at least one recording, but are they legitimate? According to Giuliani, the answer is no. There's no doubt that one of them is cut off. If you take the one that was played here num numerous times last week, it goes, some it goes something like this. Um, there's got to be financing. The president's very surprised, which indicates he didn't know about this transaction. It's financing. What, what, what do you mean financing? Cohen says, well, we, we got to pay. And he said, not by cash. Interruption. Cohen says, no, 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 but. And then Trump says, check. Immediately, it's cut off. Click. Hmm. Next thing you hear is Don Jr. He must be talking to Don Jr., but that's erased also. So, so yeah, he erased him. Cohen maintains the tapes are, in fact, authentic, but who do you believe? Because it's not like a lawyer who secretly recorded his client who, who would lie to anyone. Well, let me ask host of Justice with Judge Janine. That is on the Fox News Channel. She's the author of the brand-new best-selling book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. Judge Janine Pirro. <laughs> Hello, Kennedy. Oh, glorious lady. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. What okay. stands out most to you in this whole Cohen fiasco? The fact that he recorded the tapes, or recorded the, the conversations, rather, the fact that he seems to have edited them, or that they have been leaked in the middle of an ongoing investigation? Well, we could spend 10 minutes on each one of those uh, uh, possible possibilities you mentioned. Number one, as a judge, I would very often rule on the authenticity of a tape and whether or not the one-sided laid a proper foundation for the admissibility of such a tape. Are they admissible and, and, thus far? Well, no. You would have to have a forensic uh, analyst look at them to make sure they hadn't been tampered with. You'd have to have some kind of um, a recommend or someone saying that this is the original tape. It hasn't been tampered. It hasn't been cut off. Is it a tape of a tape? Um, and, and that's the kind of thing that you bring in forensic experts for. And by the way, Rudy Giuliani came on my show Saturday night in breaking news the first time he had mentioned it. And given that I understand that this kind of thing is only admissible if they lay a proper foundation, which means you'd have to have the original of this tape or else you better explain why there is an automatic cutoff at the point where it is beneficial to the president. But I think even more important is the the fact that you've got this guy who is tape recording a client. In some states, you can be, forget about, you know, whether or not that's ethical. You can actually be disbarred for doing that. In New York, as a one-party state, he had the right to tape it, but as a lawyer, he did not. Okay, but what about attorney-client privilege? Because right. we hear about that in terms of the Cohen raids on his home and the hotel room and his office, uh, where, you know, he was sort of Po poised as the victim. Mm -hmm. But now, what about attorney-client privilege in regards to those tapes that the FBI may have seized? Well, here's the problem. They had a master. They call him a master. It's uh, as Judge Kimball Wood appointed Judge uh, Barbara Jones uh, to look at the tapes to decide whether anything should be seen or which of them should be seen the, by the prosecutor. She made that decision. And here's the thing. We now have this tape that's been leaked to CNN. What does that tell you? That tells me it's not about the admissibility of the tape in a court of law. It's about the idea of impeaching the president, getting anything out there negative. And Maggie Hab Haberman and I believe the New York Times said, you know, Rudy didn't uh, leak it and the president didn't leak it. So L Laney, uh, uh, Lanny, Lanny Davis. Davis did it or Michael Cohen okay, did so it. Okay, so let me ask you this. Today, uh, former Mayor Giuliani said that there is one two-hour tape that exists. It's a conversation that was supposed to be off the record between Chris Cuomo and oh. Michael Cohen. I mean, can you imagine that? You actually say to someone from the press, here's my phone, I'm not gonna tape record this, I'm gonna put it in my drawer, and he lies to him and he tape records it. I'd like to know all those tapes that are in there, how many people he taped, and you wanna know why Rudy Giuliani changed his opinion from, yeah, he's a decent guy, you know, he's not the best lawyer, but he's a decent guy, to, you know, this guy's a pathological liar. He tells Chris Cuomo, I'm not taping it, and then he tapes it. He never told Donald Trump he was taping Cohen. Conversations. Plus, he was under, they were, feds were looking at him for a long time. Why did he keep this stuff? Is it his ace in the hole? And as I said in my open on Saturday, and excuse my voice, this is a guy who confessed to sinking the Titanic to get out of the crosshairs of the federal prosecutors. Well, Ed, but he hasn't been charged with anything, but it, it certainly oh, but has not been difficult for him to go back on his loyalty. Loyalty is obviously very important to 
the president. And here's a, a person that he's worked with for many, many years, and he thought this was his most loyal and, and trusted. Well, look, I mean, whenever somebody is in the crosshairs of a federal prosecutor, remember, I've been a prosecutor, judge, and DA for over three decades. I get this business. I work with the feds all the time. You're in their crosshairs. You're going to say anything, because the fact that Michael Cohen hasn't been charged with anything is not the point. The point is, the feds say to him, we've got all these files. We know what you did. Now you give us something. And you give us something, we won't charge you, or we'll charge you far, far less. But the only way to squeeze him right now is not to charge him with anything. Say, we've got all this on you. You've got kids. You don't want to go to prison for the rest of your life. Now, it's a game. It's interesting because the president once famously said, I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and my supporters wouldn't turn on me. It wouldn't make a difference. And, you know, you see the Michael Avenatti's and Michael Cohen's of the world really put this stuff into the public sphere to try and damage the president. Mm -hmm. Uh, yet somehow, even with a lot of members of the mainstream media sort of lined up against him editorially, and, you know, this continued ongoing saga of investigations and personal turmoil, uh, the president really has not been impacted as far as approval ratings. Well, not only approval ratings, but, you know, there isn't one metric that is, uh, that, that is worse off under this president. Every metric is better off. You know business. You're on the business channel. You know we've got more jobs than people to fill them. The president is more popular than he was before he met with well, Putin. Well, certainly with, with the people who are most loyal to him. No, that with, with the electorate. has not wavered at all. The people who hate him, they oh, continue, they're gonna continue to continue to hate, hate him. him. Yes. It's like that song, you know. The but what about, what about those in the middle? How are they affected? Independent voters, suburban women, voters like that, that the president critically needs were not uh, members of either one of those factions. I, I think that for the independent or the person in the middle who can be swayed, they say to themselves, you know what, enough with the hookers and the porn stars. Whatever happened, happened before he was president. He wasn't in the Oval Office with an intern of all people. You know, let's move on. I want to take care of my family. I want to keep my family safe. I think they're going to see in Donald Trump, as I talk about in my book, Liars and Leakers, a guy who's at the tip of the spear and is willing I'm to so take everything. I'm so glad you brought up your book because oh. I want I ask her all about that. Uh, just over an hour ago, the president tweeted about her book, saying, "Congratulations to Judge Janine on the tremendous success of her new number one best-selling book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals: The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy." Uh, so that's pretty high praise because it seems as though the president's book club is is quite successful, and the people he tweets about tend to sell. Quite a few copies. Well, here, here's the thing. You know, uh, it was number one on the New York Times bestsellers list, number one on the Washington Post, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. And I'm very grateful for that. The book is a reflection of what I have seen in the last election and everything in the year and a half since then. I know a con when I see it. This Russia collusion investigation was a frame up of this president so that he would be distracted. But people don't know Donald Trump. I've known him for 30 years. The man is a force of nature. Yep. He can go into a den of lions and come out with a suit and tie straight and Speaking a lion's head. Speaking of Jenna Lyons, would you, if you could do it over again, would you have gone on The View? Absolutely. Absolutely. Should, should people from Fox go on that trip? That's their call. You know what? For me, it was an absolute. I've been on it before. But what happened to me on The View is a microcosm of what's happening in this nation. And that is the left thinks they have the right to shut down the right. And the people on the right don't have a right to speak, whether it's at a university or whether it's a television show or anywhere else. It's time for people to recognize the fascists are the people who are not letting other people did you, talk. Did you use some bad words? What I did was I walked off that said and I said Whoopi you know that I have Did been I have words? been a fighting for Americans and victims my whole life I took off my mic and I was I was very angry I got thrown off a set and then got thrown out of a out of a building Did you at go ABC. back if they invited you back I'd have to think about it. I really would. I mean, I'm not there to be thrown out. The yeah. people that I was with were very, very disturbed. And I said, come on, guys, let's just go. Um, it's not the way people treat people. And if it had been the reverse, I think the consequence would have been different.